If you have a Cisco Business Wireless CBW150 Access Point, AP, besides having support for Wi-Fi 6, there are some specific features you can configure to elevate the performance and reliability of your network. If you want your network to run at its best, I'll show you how. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain the advanced settings on the CBW150AX access points. Next. First things first, after logging into the web user interface of the access point, switch to expert view by clicking the bi-directional arrow at the top. Under advanced, click on SNMP and enable the SNMP service by clicking the toggle button. Select version three and specify both the read only and the read write community strings. Click apply. If you see an error message regarding the community name, make sure to edit it according to the specified requirements. Next, scroll down and select add new SNMP v3 user. Create a username and set a password for authentication along with a privacy password. SNMP is used to facilitate monitoring with those who prefer it or who utilize a general network monitoring device such as the Cisco Business Dashboard. In my network topology, CBW is highlighted in an amber color, indicating that SNMP credentials are required. The next advanced feature is logging. By default, the syslog level is set to five notifications. You can adjust this to a lower level, sending more critical alerts only, or up to the highest level of detail, debugging, which is useful for troubleshooting. Under the RF optimization menu, you'll find the client density setting, which by default is set for data only. If you adjust it to medium or high, you gain additional options for voice and data, suitable for networks with a heavy presence of phones. Scrolling further down under advanced RF parameters, you'll find settings for 2.4 and five gigahertz optimized roaming, this feature is beneficial for when your phone is connected to an access point. You move around an area and you want your phone to automatically connect to another with a stronger signal. Enable event-driven RRM to automate the selection of the channel. To verify this, navigate to wireless settings. Under access points, click the edit button. Here, you can see that channel selection for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is set to automatic. The transmit power is at 100%. This can be set to automatic unless you're using a mesh network. It is the event-driven RRM parameter that allows this automation. As I continue, you'll see that RF profiles are set for low, typical, or high client density. Under primary AP tools, there's an option to restart the primary AP. In the Configuration Management tab, one of the new features in firmware version 10.6.2.0 is the ability to factory reset all APs if needed for troubleshooting purposes. In security settings, it's common to enable a guest Wi-Fi network with options for Facebook, Google, or other social logins. If you create VLANs on your router or switch, a separate VLAN for guests is recommended as a best security practice. A link for a video on this process is in the description. Another option is to set up an internet-only access control list, ACL. To utilize a local ACL on the access point, set a permit rule for the VLAN 1 subnet to communicate with the router, which also serves as the DHCP server. I'll also allow the router with the IP address 172.16.1.1 to communicate with the subnet 172.16.1.0. The deny rule here is to block all other traffic within the subnet. Since an ACL has an implicit deny all at the end, I must include an allow all rule to permit all internet traffic. Navigate back to wireless settings and click on WLANs. Add a new WLAN and create a guest Wi-Fi. Enable local profiling for more information on the host user and leave WLAN security as WPA2 only. 
setting the passphrase accordingly. Under VLAN and firewall, I will not use VLAN tagging, but will enable the firewall. For the ACL name IPv4, select Internet Only from the drop down menu and click Apply. Select the local guest Wi Fi and connect. To verify the ACL has taken effect, bring up the command prompt and type ping 8.8.8.8. The reply confirms there is internet access. If I ping 172.16.1.127, a CBS350 switch, there is no access as intended. All set. You can now easily manage these sophisticated features on your CBW150 access point. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.